We're here at uh, Fire Road in the, the Winlatter Pass, and we've got Ben, who's our mountain biker. And I'm shooting on the R6, and I've got the 100 to 500. And basically, it's a good test of the autofocus. Ben's going to come down this fire road at a reasonable rate of knots, and we're going to see how the R6 performs compared to what I'm used to from having shot on an R, for example. Um, and see how the camera tracks in autofocus, and also the fact that we've got this really high frame rate uh, for still shooting, we can get hopefully quite a nice burst. Now, you'll note that I'm crouched down nice and low. I'm trying to give us a bit of foreground. Uh, he'll come around this bank. We're going to wait for the eye tracking to pick up. There it is, it's already got him. And uh, we'll see what happened. So here is, um, here's the last sequence. You see, we picked Ben up quite a distance away. Uh, he's kind of nicely framed by this bank on the left. Uh, and he just coming through every single frame is sharp. And you know, I'm down on the floor, I'm using this tripod bag, a little bit of a cheat method of, of giving me some smooth motion as, as he's coming towards us. Um, but like that, that's just a beautiful frame filling shot that I, you know, uh, that would grace the cover of any magazine quite happily. So in terms of focusing, what we've got now is um, the ability for the camera to face track and face track really well and in fact detect an eye. Uh, Ben's not wearing glasses, which is great, but even with his helmet on, the camera is still picking up his face uh, and quite often his eye. And I can select where the camera starts focusing from so I can give it a bit of a helping hand to begin with. So I've pre-selected in the area that I want Ben's head to appear. It just means the camera doesn't have to look over the entire focus uh, area. Uh, here he is, coming now. He's picked up his face. And that's Ben going very fast. And I'm pretty sure that that has nailed him on every single that's insane. Genuinely, that's insane. We are now going to try and use some flash with action. So we've got Ben, our mountain biker, uh, who we were testing the autofocus with. Now, I'm a really big fan of flash. I absolutely love using flash. I think it makes pictures look so much better if you use it correctly. So we've got a couple of flash guns up here. I've got the new Canon EL1, and I've got one of my 600 EXs because I'm gonna need quite a bit of power out of it. We've got a nice little jump here that Ben's gonna come over, and I'm gonna try and shoot him. So it's an autofocus test, but we're also gonna try and hit him with flash as he comes over that jump. And hopefully we're gonna create a really dramatic picture, Ben in the air, darkish background but we've still got this lovely side light coming through picking up some of the trees and then Ben lit with the flash as he's flying through the air so uh, we're gonna get to it and see how we get on. Okay so I've set myself up nice and low that's gonna give us the appearance of Ben getting even higher over the jump obviously Ben's getting some good air anyway uh, but if we can make him look even more dramatic even higher uh, then so much the better the picture will look much stronger uh, in terms of the setup, I've got the two flash guns to give me a lot of power. I've set my exposure as if I'm not using flash. So I make everything look kind of how I want it to look uh, in terms of shutter speed, aperture and ISO. Uh, and it's looking nice and dramatic. And then I'm just going to fill in effectively with, uh, with flash. Um, I obviously need the shutter speed to be quite fast to make sure that I uh, freeze Ben as he's going uh, and, uh, and from there that's really about it. Uh, okay so we've moved now down into the woods and 
We've got this beautiful berm that we're gonna get Ben to come and ride around. And I'm just gonna build this light setup. So I've got two flash guns here. These are gonna be the front light for Ben as he rides around the berm. And what I'm thinking is we may put another light up behind, which is gonna give like a nice back separation light, almost probably give us a starburst in the background as well. But I wanna start with one, always start simple. Start with as few lights as you need because it just makes your life that much easier. Um, I've got two flash guns. Again, I'm gonna need quite a lot of power. Uh, so I want them to recycle quickly. Um, although the, the, the EL1 I've noticed is recycling really fast with that re rechargeable battery pack uh, that it's got, the, the lithium ion pack that they've built into the EL1. So that in itself is doing really well, but just I need so much power for this uh, that I've decided to go for two. Uh, I've put the wide panel diffusers down to try and make sure I get a nice broad spread of light. Uh, and, and hopefully, if I can pick the right point to hit him, uh, we're gonna get a pretty great shot with, with a nice background and, and Ben in his red really standing out. There we go. Okay, so as Ben's coming around us on this berm, I'm then panning with him at the same time. I've got a slow shot speed. I'm down at now a 20th of a second, um, which is giving me this lovely, interesting blur in the background, but the flash is freezing Ben. The autofocus is absolutely nailing him, nailing him. Um, and, uh, and yeah, it's looking pretty damn good. Okay, so we've been shooting action. We've been photographing Ben as he comes down the fire road. Here he comes again. Once more, there he goes. Look at that. Um, we've actually done a little bit of flash as well, just as a little test. And we've really put the R6 through its paces to see how the autofocus performs. And when Ben was coming straight towards the camera, that's pretty much the hardest thing for a camera to photograph, anything coming straight towards it, particularly at speed, because the, the rate of change is so great. And yet the camera's managed to track Ben, focus on his face all the way down. We've moved to the panning. Obviously it becomes much more about my panning technique. We've got shots, the autofocus has still worked perfectly. It's still tracked Ben, picked up his face, detected his eye at times as well, and kept kept him sharp. Whether my panning has been up to the job today or not, well, we'll have to wait and see when we look at the pictures later on. But so far, hugely impressed. And one of the things about the R6, say compared to the R5, is that the, the resolution is lower, quite a lot lower compared to the R5, which is 45 megapixels, and, and the R6 is more like 21. That means the pixels are bigger. So it's better at gathering light in low light situations, but more importantly, when you're doing moving subjects, you get less camera shake or subject blur. So when you have higher resolutions like on the R5, those small pixels mean that any motion of the, of the camera or any motion of the subject moves over a greater number of pixels in any given time period. And that means you're more likely to see blur or camera shake. And that's why the R6 is predominantly more suited to that kind of sports action wildlife arena where you will have a moving subject and you don't therefore necessarily want to take your shutter speed up quite as high to try and counteract any of that motion blur. So R6, hugely impressed. Uh, I think it definitely deserves a space in a bag if you are someone that's interested in sports, action or wildlife, anything really with moving subjects.